Hi. If this looks incredibly safe, that's because it is. That's a USB dead drop. Basically, at some point people started uh, putting USB sticks into walls, weird places, putting up a map where you could find those USB sticks for people to basically just go connect to them and share files. So the idea of these dead drops is kind of interesting. You know, I like this kind of offline file sharing system. But of course, uh, using a USB stick or using a, like a cable that just comes out of a wall, that's just asking for trouble because there is no, there is no telling if that's really a USB stick or if it's like a USB killer or something like that. And the concept isn't new either. I mean, of course, this dates back to spy operations back in the Cold War, where uh, even things like dead rats were used. And if you don't believe me, here is like an actual exhibit. So at some point, uh, somebody figured out that there must be a nicer way of doing this and making this a little bit safer, you know, aside from the files that you actually transfer. And a uh, new project appeared at some point called Pirate Box. And I've been running a Pirate Box for many, many years at this point. Uh, it was really fun and I had one in, in Vienna, I had one in Lower Austria. And yeah, I mean, I ran this for quite some time. At some point I decided I want to reinvigorate this and I looked at the Pirate Box site and then I saw, oh, it's basically dying. And this has two reasons. One is if you look at the um, stuff you need, you'll see that they are asking for basically, you know, a tiny selection of routers that you can buy for cheap, but most of those routers you can no longer flash with this software. You could use um, Raspberry Pi, but it's a kind of a pain to set up. The source code is really cumbersome. It's a lot of Python, shell script, JavaScript, and essentially all it did was it gave you this page where you could browse for files and upload files and have a little chat box. So I thought, okay, with the official project basically dead and nobody really doing anything with that anymore, let's look for alternatives. And I didn't really see anything that tickled my fancy. I mean, there is Freedom Box, for example, but that's just not the same thing. You know, it, it does a lot more. And I thought, no, that's that's not what I want. I want. I want this. I want a better version of this. I want to browse files. I want to upload files. And I, I don't want pretty much anything else. You know, maybe a chat box at some point, but the really the interesting thing is the files. And uh, I took matters into my own hand and made a project called Sharebox. And I will show you what this project is all about and how to install it later on. So the, the big benefit of Sharebox over something like uh, Piratebox is uh, this is a single piece of software. There's very few moving parts. It's written in Rust, so it's it's really easy to get going. It's really easy to compile on pretty much any platform out there. And it produces a web UI that is responsive, that is dynamic, and that's really nice to use. So first, what does it do? Sharebox is essentially a captive portal. This is the web page that you see when you connect to the, uh, to the Wi-Fi. And you can browse through the uh, directories and you can upload files, for example. I could upload this photo here. Now it's uploaded. And if there's interesting stuff, of course, I can, uh, I can download it. So if I click on this here, bam, bean, there we go. And of course, there's some basic protection stuff in, like you cannot uh, go back in the upper directories, uh, you cannot overwrite files. So if you, if you try to overwrite something uh, with, the, with the same file name, it saves it with a dash and a number at the end. So basic stuff like that. There's not much management going on here. So if I go in here and I were to upload something here into games, it would appear in games. So um, there's room for improvement. There could be something like an uploads directory or maybe, you know, Anytime you upload anything, it just goes into a designated upload directory like that. Room for improvement. So right now, this is how it works. This this does the job basically, and it, it works a lot better than the original Pirate Box because you know it's I mean it's a lot faster to begin with. The one thing that I did not do yet is for file uploading. If you upload large files, there's no progress indicator. Unfortunately, there is um, there is some issues in Leptos which I'm using, which we'll get to. Sharebox is written in Rust, 
and it uses a single code base for the backend and the front end. The main components are Actix for the web server and Leptos for the actual user interface. And I'll show you around a little bit how that all ties together. So if we look into main RS, our main function, there is the main function for the web server part essentially and the entry point for the application. And the main part here is the, the app. So this is an Actix application and there is a bunch of stuff inside this application and I'll just explain briefly what that does. First we have a wrapper for uh, that's a middleware so called middleware for domain redirects. So basically what this does is it's, it's down here anytime you get a request that is not containing the actual uh, domain that we want to use in this case sharebox.lan we redirect to that domain. The idea is that this triggers the captive portal detection in operating systems. So what operating systems do when you connect to a Wi-Fi is they try to connect to certain domains that they know they should be able to reach. And if they are not able to reach them, then you don't have any connectivity. But if they get a redirect, they know that, hey, uh, there's some sort of captive portal that the user should go and log in to get internet access. So this is what we're triggering here. Then next we have some settings for you know maximum upload size, memory limitations, etc. And, and put in an error handler. Then we have API routes for Leptos. So Leptos can do code that runs on, on the server and exposes an API. Then we have some static file handling for PKG, which I'll explain in a bit, the assets, and of course the files we want to share, and the FAF icon. And then we have a handler for uploads. So file uploads are also handled in, in Actix itself. Then we hook in the actual Leptos route. So the, the entire user interface stuff in Leptos is, is connected here. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. So temporary, temporary files, etc. And that is basically it, except for some save file stuff here. So when we get a file, and it already exists, then uh, a number is appended to the uh, to the end of the file. So what this prevents is that if you share, for example, your movie library, uh, somebody else cannot go in and upload a file with the same name as an existing movie file and destroy your file essentially. Now let's go into Leptos. Leptos is a web framework that combines backend and frontend into one code base. What it can do is it can render uh, your user interface entirely on the client side. It can do it with server side rendering. You actually have a bunch of different modes you can use in your application. The default is out of order streaming, but that's just an aside. So to look at the, at the code base here, the main thing is we have the main components so the, the application with our roots. So we have basically just a homepage and anything else is not found. If we go to the homepage view, we have the title, header, we have uh, some, some text, and we have a file list component. The file list component contains the form for the upload. Yes, this should probably be a separate component, but improvements are always welcome. And the list of files that are being shared and that you can download. As you can imagine, this is dynamic. So you want to read that from the server. You don't want this to be somehow pre-rendered and then uh, displayed to the, you know, on the client side and then never changing. So these parts here for path.clone here uh, and this entire section here, these are all dynamic. And Leptos handles this basically for you. What you use to tell it that something changed is called a signal. So we have here, for example, we have a loading signal for letting us know when, you know, if the loading is still going on or it's finished. And we have a signal for ch uh, setting the path and getting an updated file listing. And then here we have a resource that contains the actual file list. So this is what's actually transferring the, the, the file list. If I go to get file list, this is a server function. So this turns into an API function on the server. This code does the usual stuff. It goes through the files directory, checks if it's a directory or a file, um, gets the file size, sorts it, and then returns the, um, the directory listing. And I'm also adding a dot dot entry to the top so you can go back to the upper directory if you're inside a subdirectory. So how do we compile this? There's basically two ways. One is for development. You can use cargo leptos watch. 
This will compile your application, run it, and then you can actually open a web browser and see the application and browse and do everything you normally do. And it also supports hot reloading. So if you change code, it automatically recompiles, sends a message to the browser telling it that there is a new version and it will, it will seamlessly update. The second way to build is cargo leptos build minus minus release. And this is the main method that we're using to generate the executable and all the necessary files. So what files are we actually getting? We are getting a site directory, which contains uh, some static assets, a CSS file, a JavaScript file, and a WASM file. And then in release, we also have an executable. In the case of Windows, it's an exe file. The project includes installation scripts and configuration files that are by default set up for a Raspberry Pi and its internal wireless interface. So there is three shell scripts that you need to run on your Raspi to get Sharebox up and running. They don't have to be run in any particular order. First, let's start with the enable captive portal script. This installs DNS mask, host APD, and sets up some IP tables, routing rules. So what it does is essentially traffic on port 80 is being forwarded to port 3000, which is the default port of Sharebox. And then we have a forward for port 443 for HTTPS, and this is being forwarded to port 3443. On port 3443, there is Nginx, which is uh, configured here. So we have an Nginx config file that just listens on port 3443 and handles the, the SSL termination. In the setup SSL script, uh, there's OpenSSL, generates a self-signed certificate, copies the configuration file, starts Nginx. That's basically it. In the future, if I or somebody else decides to uh, change Sharebox and include the uh, HTTPS inside the application itself, which is definitely possible, you could actually remove Nginx and just uh, keep this line here. Or you could decide, I don't want this, uh, this forward rule, I would just want Nginx to run directly on port 443, then you just remove this, uh, this entry here. Don't forget netfilter persistent safe to make these rules persistent. And the last shell script is setup server. So this basically creates a user, creates a directory under root, and uh, with a files directory, ch owns it, copies some, some files from the compiled uh, target directory, copies a systemd script for the service, and then starts the service. If you want to use a USB Wi-Fi interface, you'll have to make some changes. You might have to change, for example, uh, the zero here to a one. You might have to change the interface name here, and you might have to change the interface name in the host APD config. If you want to use a USB Wi-Fi interface, make sure that it's really fully supported. So if you see that you see a Wi-Fi that's been created with the SSID here, but you can't really connect to it or the connection breaks off after some time, do look for a driver because uh, in my case in particular, with the Wi-Fi card that I was using, I, I experienced the very same thing. As soon as you install the uh, Linux kernel driver, uh, the problems just go away typically. Or uh, you might have a Wi-Fi interface that is not supporting the uh, access point mode. This is something that you should look for. If you don't want to use a Raspberry Pi with a Wi-Fi card, if you have, for example, Unify equipment, uh, Ubiquiti Wi-Fi in your house or around your house, you can actually use that. And I will show you how to do that in a separate video. So you get your Raspberry, put in your SD card, connect the uh, cables and everything, set up Raspberry OS without a desktop if possible, and install, most importantly, install git. So do an apt update, and apt install git, or do it as I do and install all the other stuff that you usually like to have on any Linux system that you use. Once that's done, it's time to install 
Rust using the command line that's on the website. Select the uh, default option, which is one. When that's done, you clone the git repository using git clone, which will be very quick. And then you go into the sharebox directory, which you just downloaded via git, and you run cargo install cargo leptos, and then cargo leptos build minus minus release. That'll take some time. And we're done. And now we can use the install scripts to install the service and all the other stuff that we need. Because I'm using a USB stick for uh, an external Wi-Fi adapter, I have to go in and change the wireless interface number. So I'm changing from VLAN 0 to VLAN 1 here. And also here. And also in host APD. Remember to install the driver for your wireless interface if necessary. And then you should be set. Now we run setup server, which installs Sharebox binary and the uh, Sharebox directory on the uh, root of the file system. And we see it's running at the bottom. Now we install the captive portal. So DNS mask, IP tables, all that good stuff. Select yes if it asks you to save the rules. And there we go. We connect it to the wireless network. We go to any website and there is Sharebox. There's nothing there yet, so we'll just upload a file. So select browse, select any file. And press submit. Obviously for bigger files, it'll take quite some time. And there you go.